Okay, so um, hello and welcome to our first lesson, right, in scientific computing too. So we are coming to learn how to use Python for scientific computing, okay? But before that, we will have to be introduced to the Python programming language. So <clears throat> I'm Renov Bredokran, a final student of mathematics at Kane University, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. So this is going to be a very short lesson, a brief one, okay? Just telling you something some more about programming. In our next videos, we will start um, we will start learning how to write codes, okay? So in this video, we will talk about how to download and install Python 3, okay? And brief introduction to Python. So, um, I'll be using Python 3 throughout our studies to teach you, okay? So, um, we are going to download the Python 3 from www.python.org slash download, okay? But if you have any test editor apart from this one that we are downloading, then you can use that one, okay? Because you have other test editors like the Visual Studio Code, um, some people are using Spider and PyCharm and the rest. And so if you have any of those ones, you can still use them, okay? But if you don't have any of those ones, then you can decide to download the Python IDLE from this website here, okay? So when you go to that website, you are going to get something like this. Then when you click download, you'll be able to download and install it. This is very simple and the size is very small as well. So... Python is available for both Mac and Windows and Linux, all right? So no matter the operating system you are using, whether you are using Ubuntu, you are using Mac OS, or you are using Windows, okay? You should be able to download Python on it. So after downloading the Python, then you follow the on-screen instructions to install it, which is very simple, okay? So We'll be using a Python IDLE, but we have other test editors such as Anaconda, PyCharm, Spider, Visual Studio Code. You can even use Notepad++, just Notepad in the ring. So we have a lot of editors that you can use, okay? So you can have any of them that you want, okay? So now let's look at a brief introduction to Python. So Python is probably the easiest to learn and nicest to use programming language okay so as a result of that mostly python is recommended as the first programming language to learn to a lot of beginners because python codes are very easy to learn and to understand as well okay so in widespread use python code is clear to read and write and it is concise and one thing about learning how to program in Python is that if you can program in Python, you can transfer your knowledge to other programming languages such as C, R, MATLAB, C Sharp, and the rest because the programming flow is the same thing. You just have to know the way of doing that in MATLAB. So for instance, if you know how to use the for loop in Python, you just have to learn the syntax of doing that in MATLAB or R, then you're able to transfer your knowledge to what? those programming languages okay so python has been used to write a lot of useful programs and the most common example is that python was used to build google so most of the layout of google was built using python so python is very powerful okay so python is a popular programming language which was created in 1991 so i guess most of us are older than python but i should tell you python is not that old okay by Gudo van Rosum. And Python was created using the C programming language. You know, the C programming language is a middle level programming language, and Python is a high level programming language. Okay. So Python can be used for web development, software development, mathematics, and system scripting. Okay. It can be used to write scripts just like Bash. You know, we did Bash. We did bash scripting in our first semester. That's when we were talking about 
scientific computing one so we can use Python to do the same thing and it can also be used to do mathematics it has a lot of packages and libraries models that we can use to do it. several complex mathematics okay so Python can be used to handle big data and perform complex mathematics and one good thing about Python is that it has a syntax similar to the English language okay so print for if you know the language is just beautiful so python 3 which we'll be using in our study is the most recent version of python okay so um we have python 2 and python 3 and most of the applications that we can have are written in python 2 because at first that was what we were using okay but now we have python 3 and that's what we are using and i think we are now at python 3.9 something so that means very soon we can jump into python 4 but python 3 is very cool and there are some small differences between python 2 and python 3 so it's better you learn python 3 now okay because that's the direction the world is moving into so we'll be learning python 3. so python files normally have the extension .py if you could recall when you're writing bash script we said they have the extension .sh matlab scripts or files have the extension .m okay so python files have the extension .py while we sometimes use .pw for graphical user interface programs okay so after learning command prompt programming in python you can extend your knowledge to graphical user interface where you can use packages like tkinter and the rest okay and one thing I should note is that we begin comments in Python by using what hash. Okay. If you could recall in MATLAB, we used to write comments using the percentage. In Bash, we used hash. Yes, in Python we use hash to what comment. And Python is case sensitive. So Python is case sensitive. And you have to follow that because when you type, for instance, capital K then OFI, maybe Kofi, you start with capital K and the rest are small letters. And you write another one, which is just in small caps. They are not the same. Python is case sensitive, so you have to be very careful. And you have something that we call keywords. Okay. And almost all the keywords and built-in functions in Python are all in lower case. Most of the keywords, almost all of them, they are in lower case. Okay, so you have to note that. So for instance, with a Python IDLE, this is the interface, okay? So you can also have the interface for yours using Visual Studio Code, using PyCharm, using um, Spider, Notepad++, any test editor that you are using. I'm sure you have a nice interface. So by now, I expect that you, ha you have any test editor installed on your machine, okay? So that in our next videos, we'll start learning some functions and start learning how to write some small code programs and the rest okay so this was the introduction lesson to python and i hope it was very useful so see you in the next lesson